Welcome back to the podcast. My name is Ari. I've got another episode for you in the Law of One series, another one about the pyramids. In the previous episode, if you didn't listen to it, we discussed who allegedly built the pyramids. It was Ra, of course. Spoiler alert if you haven't watched that or listened to that. And what the pyramid's purpose was, but how exactly were they built? And that's what I'm going to talk about in this episode. How were the blocks moved when building the pyramids? First of all, is it even possible for us to know this? When it is explained to us, if it is explained to us by Ra, will we even be able to understand it? Will we even be able to believe it? And I'm going to share this quote now, and it's a pretty long quote, so bear with me here. This is from The Law of One, Book One, page 77. Quote, unquote, You must picture the activity within all that is created. The energy is, though finite, quite large compared to the understanding slash distortion by your peoples. This is an obvious point well known to your people, but little considered. This energy is intelligent. It is hierarchical. Much as your mind-body-spirit complex dwells within a hierarchy of vehicles and retains, therefore, the shell or shape or field and the intelligence of each ascendingly intelligent or balanced body, so does each atom of such a material as rock. When one can speak to that intelligence, the finite energy of the physical or chemical rock slash body is put into contact with that infinite power which is resident in the more well-tuned bodies be they human or rock. With this connection made, a request may be given. The intelligence of infinite rockness communicates to his physical vehicle and that splitting and moving which is desired is then carried out through the displacement of the energy field of rockness from finity to a dimension which we may call conveniently simply infinity. In this way, that which is... (laughs) That which is required is accomplished due to a cooperation of the infinite understanding of the the creator indwelling in the living rock. This is, of course, the mechanism by which many things are accomplished which are not subject to your present means of physical analysis of action at a distance. And this is absolutely fascinating. This is why I love the law of one, because even if you don't believe this stuff to be true, you could at least open your mind a little to realize that this is an intelligent entity that has the intelligence more than anybody could possibly even understand, and they are just dropping so many gems in this. First of all, understanding that everything is alive. The energy in these rocks is alive. These rocks are actually alive. And the energy in these rocks, as Ra claims, is more than we think. That is important. This energy is also intelligent. We don't think about rocks being intelligent. But no, these rocks are actually intelligent. They're actually connected with infinite intelligence as we're all connected with infinite intelligence as we're all unified as one. This energy is also hierarchical. I'm not sure if I ever pronounced that word right. Hierarchical, it's in a hierarchy. And that's the same thing with the energy in our body. So in a certain way, with the hierarchies, we are not that much different than entities such as rocks. And we can also compare this energy, this hierarchy, to that in our body, to see the distinctions between us and rocks, but to realize that the same kind of magic that went on with building the pyramids can actually go on with changing our bodies as well. And this energy hierarchy is what creates the shape or shell or form, this field of form, this energy field. And Ra claims that the intelligence of each ascendingly intelligent body, that it's always going up, we can access this ever ascending, ever increasing intelligence because it is part of our body. It is also part of this rock's body, this rock's connection to quote unquote infinite rockness. And this is very interesting when they say that you can speak to that rock. Yes, I know. I'm not sure that anybody's ever spoken to a rock before, maybe like a stoner, but no, you can actually speak to this rock, connect with its infinite power, make the connection, make that request, And then the intelligence of quote-unquote infinite rockness communicates to its physical vehicle and does what needs to be done. The splitting and the moving that you want to occur, you want the rocks to be aligned in some certain order. And it really what happens, according to Ra, is that it displaces the energy field of rockness from finity, from finite, to a dimension of infinity. Something that we can't even conceptualize, this magic, this beauty of life. And I think this is absolutely awe-inspiring. These pyramids have inspired generations, countless generations of people to believe that more is possible because we can't explain what's going on. 
Just because Ra can explain this here doesn't mean that we can even understand this. I'm trying to explain this and talk to other people, but I barely even understand this myself. But I also can tell that my understanding is getting a little deeper just by trying to make the effort to understand. And another quote that I'm just going to highlight here is when Ra says, that which is required is accomplished due to a cooperation of the infinite understanding of the creator indwelling in the living rock this is very important to note that the creator is in all and this is something that the majority of our society rejects our society doesn't want to believe that the creator could be in the rock we are very egotistical we are very arrogant we don't like to think that something as humble as a rock could contain the entire universe could contain the infinite creator But this is the mechanism by which a lot of things get accomplished. Ross says that this is how many things are accomplished, but does that really make sense? Now that we've kind of talked about how were the blocks moved when making the pyramids, does that make you even more confused? Or can you kind of picture how this could have went down 10,000 years ago or whenever Ra claims to have built the pyramids? I mean, we as a society still haven't figured out how this blocks were moved. We still haven't created technology that could match the grandeur and the beauty and the perfection of these pyramids. So does that make this true? I want to know what you think. Do you think that this is plausible? Do you think that this is a solid explanation of how the blocks were moved when building the pyramids? Does this answer make sense to you? Do you agree with this? Even if this answer doesn't make sense to you, can you kind of see some truth in this? I want to know your thoughts and opinions. Please let me know. Comment down below. Love to have a discussion about this.